here it is. This is our visual designer. And you can see uh, that it's kind of divided into sort of three sections. We've got a section here on the left that starts with the word widget. Um, we've got a section in the middle that's sort of a big area that looks like graph paper. And then we've got a kind of a section on, on the right-hand side. And, and that's not exactly accurate. We, you know, there's more stuff going on. But it's, you know, basically divided into those three sections. So uh, this widget section here on the left, this is, um, this is the different types of uh, fields, if you will, or elements that you can put on your screen. So all the things that make up your screen are here. Now, in a traditional green screen environment, you really only had three options. You had constants for the screen. You know, just a piece of text that's always the same on the screen, a screen constant or literal. We call that a label. Um, you also had output fields, of course. And then you had input or both fields, um, which we call text boxes here. So these first three widgets you see here actually represent those same things you had in green screen, but there's a whole lot more here. We've got things like drop-down boxes and buttons and check boxes. We've got date pickers. We've got pictures that can go on the screen. We've got graphs and charts. So there's just lots and lots and lots of new stuff. And in fact, this uh, there's about 150 different widgets here in Profound UI that, that you can use to build your screens. So the way it works is you take these widgets and you drag them into that middle section. The middle section is called the canvas, and it's where you build your screen. So if I wanted to put a constant on the screen, I would drag a label. A label is what we use for screen constants. And then I can uh, just change it. So you can see I don't really need to understand the, the HTML or anything behind this. I can just you know, drag and drop and point and click. And I can build my screen you know, very easily. If I want to make this bigger, I can just stretch it out or whatever it is I want to do. So if I wanted to have a simple screen where we just enter a customer number, I might have a, a, a text telling the user what to enter. I might have a box where they can type that customer number into. and um, and these widgets we see here are not the only ones, of course. This is actually divided into sections of widgets. So if I go down, um, I can expand each section. You'll see that there's lots of them. So like I said, there's about 150 different widgets available. And I'm just looking at all the different buttons right now. We've, just, you know, we've got that many you know, just buttons alone. Um, I actually kind of like these CSS buttons, in fact. So for, I think for this screen, I'll use those. I'll put some buttons on here. Um, and um, I was thinking, you know, kind of look like, you know, your basic, you know, modern graphical application. We want to have something like an OK and cancel button. So I dragged on buttons um, that have that kind of graphics I wanted for that sort of thing. And I can just change the text on it by double clicking it and, you know, typing the new text. So you can see it's very easy to build screens this way. I don't really need to know anything about the underlying technology. Now, I have complete control, actually, of all these fields and all the different attributes that are being used to output them. And that's done in this properties box that's over here. So as I click on these different widgets, you'll see that the properties box changes to reflect the properties, if you will, of, of all of these widgets. And they're all set up with defaults for everything, but I can actually control any of these in my program, too. So I could go in and I could change, you know, for example, in this input box here, I could change things like the fonts, I could change the colors, um, I can change any of that. And I could just, you know, if I wanted to, I could, I could do it right here. Like if I wanted to center it, I could change the text alignment to center. Um, I'm not actually going to do it, but I could. Um, or I could also control them from RPG variables. So you'll notice when I click on it, I get this little yellow button. We call that a binding button. Um, so what, what, what we're going to do is we're actually going to connect that to an RPG variable. So if I wanted to, for example, control the color of this field um, from an RPG program, I could click that uh, button, and I could define an RPG variable that's bound or connected um, to that color property. So I, in this case, make a variable called color, and it's just a character variable. Um, and then the RPG program could put the word red in there if it wanted this field to be red, or green, or blue, or whatever. Um, and then in that way, it could have control over you know, any attribute of the screen it wants to just by, uh, just by connecting an RPG variable. Not going to do it again. This is just you know, sort of a simple test program, so I'm not actually going to do that. I just wanted you to know that that capability was there. Um, what, what, what I do want to do, though, is um, I want to take this field and connect its value to an RPG variable. So a value is what reflects whatever the user types in that box or whatever, um, whatever the program wanted to output in that box. Um, that's the value property. So if I connect value to a field, in this case something like cus no, um, I can connect it to an RPG variable. And that way when we do execute format and then the screen comes back to the RPG program, um, it can read that customer number field or cus no to get the value that the user typed. Um, and in fact, we've got all the different decimal, uh, decimal data types and all the different data types you're expecting to uh, have in um, an RPG application. So in this case, this is a decimal field. It's four long with zero decimal places. 
Uh, Profound UI will take care of making sure that they can only type four digits and that they cannot have any decimal places and that it's you know all numeric and stuff like that. It'll do all that automatically for you. Um, it also has all the different formatting options you would expect to have, like in a green screen environment. So we got things like edit words, um, edit masks. Um, we can add on currency symbols. We can control, you know, add like a unit of measure if we want to. We can control how negative numbers are formatted. Um, blank fill, zero fill, and of course this is just the numeric ones. We've got formatting for all the different data types as well. So um, think about if you had to write a web application and you had to code all that in JavaScript. You know that takes time to, to code all that, but with Profound UI, of course, it's all done for you automatically. So that's um, it's it's a pretty cool that we have all that kind of all figured out in the way that RPGers are expecting it to be. So now I've connected that customer number field to that uh, blank, and whatever the user types will go into that variable, as I mentioned before. I'm going to do the same thing, of course, for the buttons. When somebody clicks on this OK button, I want it to turn on an indicator in my RPG program. That's done with the response property, so I'll click the binding button on the response property, and then I could set that, if I wanted to, to an indicator. So for example, indicator 33, and then the RPG program could do if indicator 33 is on, and then it could do whatever logic you know it wants to do in the OK button is pressed. Or actually, what I prefer, instead of using a numbered indicator, I prefer to use a named indicator. Um, so we Profound fully supports those as well. We can say BTN is just short for button. Um, so BTN OK or button OK. And then the RPG program can do if button OK is on. Um, and, and it will know that somebody clicked the OK button. And we'll do the same thing, of course, for the cancel button. We'll just uh, connect that to an indicator as well, BTN cancel. And um, so that's you know that's a quick, a simple screen design. Now, of course, in order for RPG to display this with execute format, you know, it's always the execute format opcode followed by the record format to display. So I do have to give this a record format name. And for that reason, we've got this little dialog here where you can um, work with record format names. And I'll just call this one screen one for the sake of a simple example. And we can add and remove record formats and stuff like that. And, and David will show you more, you know, more about that later. But um, you know, it's like a green screen environment. We can have as many record formats in the file as we want to, and we can, you know, have different screens on each one. And this will all compile then down to a display file. So let me save this. It actually saves this as DDS code. So I will save this um, into a member, and I'm just going to call it test D for test display file. And I'll, I'll call, I'll say, okay, this is my test for the webinar or whatever. And um, I'll save that. And then I'll show you what that code looks like. Um, so you can, you know, kind of get a little bit of a feel for it. So I'm just going to bring it up in SEU real quick, as just as a simple way to look it up. Um, and we call that test D. So here it is. Um, so you can see that this is, in fact, DDS code. We've got, you know, like R in the record format name there. That's, the, you know, the record format name I just specified in the designer. And if we go to the bottom, you can see it does have the fields that I defined as well. And, you know, they're defined as one alpha for the indicators or four S for the numeric. So pretty much what you would expect, except notice that they're all hidden fields. And we're not using any DDS keywords except this HTML keyword. And we've got all this stuff here in the HTML keyword. So while this is DDS, it's kind of weird DDS. In fact, if you displayed this on a green screen, the screen would come up completely blank because that HTML keyword would do nothing on the green screen and the uh, um, fields are all hidden fields. So it would be a completely blank screen. It would do you no good at all. But in fact, our Profound UI handler, that's the routine called when we do execute format or whatever, um, will get all of these details, and it will use that to, to produce the graphical display in your browser. So what all this stuff is, is it's just all the different properties that I was able to set here on the screen. Um, and it's just being saved then in that HTML keyword. And the fact that we've got it there in that uh, HTML keyword like that, again, means we're not at all limited by what's in DDS. We can code anything we want in there. We can um, we can put, you know, any value. We can add our own keywords, remove our own keywords, whatever we want to do. Now, of course, you'd never want to try to edit this in SEU like that. That, you know, that would be a real mess to try to work with. Instead, you just open your display file in the Visual Designer. You change your properties in here, and then when you save it, it just saves it here. And again, the reason we want to keep it all in the DDS member to begin with is because now it works perfectly, you know, with your change management software. And in fact, I can still compile this, you know, with the IBM Create Display File command. It, it will work fine. And of course, things like uh, change management software will use that to, um, to do builds and that sort of thing. Um, but of course, when we're developing it, it's much more convenient to just compile it from within our designer here. We've got a little compile button that does that. So all I have to do is click the compile button. 
I mean, it already knows the source member name and stuff like that, so I just give it the object name, and I'm calling it test D for test display file, and I'm putting it in a library called um, WB Demo 2. It's just what we call the, the library we use for this webinar. And then when I click compile, it will run that. It's actually running that same dis, uh, create display file command under the covers, but it's compiling that as, as a display file object. So if I were to look that up um, in that library, and it's called test D, you can see there it is. You know, that's the display file that I just uh, just made. And you can see it's got the text that I just typed and so forth. Um, so it's, it's just a regular display file object. Now, from the RPG perspective, um, let me uh, pull up what some RPG code. And I'm, I'm not going to write the code. You know, I, I've already done that in advance. It's just so you can kind of get the feel for how this works. Um, we've just got an F spec, and we've added on this handler keyword. Now, I've also stuck on this external file keyword. And I just did that because um, it, was, it was just quicker and easier for me to, to do that rather than adding uh, that WB demo to library into my library list. I just, I just use external file to hard code the library just for this you know, sort of one-off example. Um, but you wouldn't do that in production. Um, and so in a real application, the only thing you would have to do special is have that handler keyword. And it's always that same keyword exactly that way. Um, so once you've got that, you can use the regular RPG opcodes like execute format. And it will display your screen in a browser. And um, then we're also checking the fields. So after displaying the screen, we can check for the, for the OK button and do some code to handle that or whatever. And then this whole program is just looping on that screen until the cancel button is clicked. So obviously, it's just a skeleton of a program. But I've got enough code here that's enough that we can you know, try it, see if it works. So let me uh, compile that guy up, and uh, we'll give it a shot. Um, so we call it test R, and it's um, in that demo library. I'll compile that real quick, and there we go. And it compiled, of course, against that display file object we created. And then we can we can run it. So we still use the IBM compiler. We still use the uh, IBM um, editors and stuff like that for your RPG code. Nothing changes on the RPG side except that one keyword. And here it is. Now I've got my uh, I've got my display running in a web browser, as you can see. And we can enter a customer number, and we can click OK. And of course, right now it doesn't do anything but repeat the screen when you click OK. Um, but then it'll, it'll end when you click the Cancel button. So uh, that's my sort of quick uh, quick introduction to our visual designer, if you will.